Why? Moonfall. So Moonfall is the newest disaster movie from Roland Emmerich, the same guy that brought us Independence Day, Independence Day Resurgence, we don't talk about that one, and of course, 2012. And if you've seen the trailers for Moonfall, you kind of pretty much already know what this movie is. An alien life form takes over the moon, which causes it to fall out of its own orbit and sends it on a collision course with us. Now Patrick Wilson, Halle Berry, and John Bradley have to stop it from happening before the Earth completely wipes out all life on the planet. Simple premise, right? <laughs> Guys, this movie is dumb. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Let's get that right out the gate and just establish that this movie is dumb as hell. And it's funny because Roland Emmerich's movies are known for being dumb and somewhat over the top, but dumb and over the top does not mean your movie is good. But for whatever reason, Moonfall seems to think the exact opposite. But for whatever reason, Moonfall tries to disregard the over the top factor and just ramps up the dumb and stupid by like a thousand. This movie had probably about maybe 15 minutes worth of shit being destroyed. Out of a two hour movie, all you could actually give us was 15 minutes of destruction. Really? In what's already supposed to be a disaster movie. Seriously? You know, if you're going to make a disaster movie, how about making a disaster movie? But no, instead we're treated to a two-hour bore fest of us just following around some of Roland Emmerich's most annoying characters of all time. Oh my god, the characters. <laughs> what the actual hell, Roland? Why the hell is Patrick Wilson here? Come on, man, I know you're better than this. He plays this astronaut that's just kind of fallen from grace, and he's... Kind of a washed up dick. His family don't want anything to do with him, and his son hates him for reasons. Oh, and Halle Berry's here too. <laughs> Holy shit, Halle Berry, I am so sorry. Did Roland Emmerich kidnap Halle Berry and hold her at gunpoint? Because <laughs> her facial expression throughout this whole movie matches that of somebody who's being held at gunpoint. <laughs> and of course, last but not least, we have John Bradley. And what did I think of him, you might ask? There you go. It's almost like they took Jeff Goldblum's character from Independence Day and just made him even more over the top to the point where he's just really annoying. He plays the conspiracy theorist type character that's pretty much right about everything that's happening in this movie. That still doesn't make him compelling though. All of these characters are just lame and lifeless. You don't care about them or their personal problems or how this whole moon falling out of orbit situation is affecting them. I mean, you, you feel nothing for them. I came to see the moon destroy shit. Not listen to you guys cry for two hours. Oh yeah, Michael Pena's in this movie too. <laughs> but he's pretty much a cameo. Because he only gets about maybe ten minutes worth of screen time. Total. Also, the conflicting tones of this movie just completely take you out. Even more than you already are taken out. At times, it felt like this movie was trying to be, you know, a serious character drama. But at the same time, was also trying to be an awkward comedy. And it just flips back and forth between the two constantly. I mean, you have characters saying shit like, God help you if you're wrong. God help us all. And then you got John Bradley in space going, What? My, my phone was on airplane mode. Haha, <laughs> real funny guys. I was really entertained. It's conflicting tones and dialogue like that that just confuse me as the movie goes on. Also, if you're going to see this movie because of science... <laughs> Don't even bother. The science in this movie makes about as much sense as those bombs being dropped in The Last Jedi. It makes no sense at all. Like, you see that shot in the trailer where the moon is just tearing the Earth apart and they're just bouncing a car across the pieces of it? Yeah, apparently something called gravity and physics don't mean shit to Roland Emmerich. Especially in a disaster movie about the fucking moon. It's just sloppy and lazy and once again, makes no fucking sense. I'm going to give a minor spoiler warning right here, which I wouldn't even call it a spoiler warning because I don't think anyone's going to go see this movie. But there came a point during the movie where I went from just being mildly annoyed by everything that was going on to just being pissed. And I mean super pissed too. I mean, I feel like this movie insulted my intelligence in a way. And I think it happened somewhere right where the third act began. 
for some weird reason that I'll probably never get, this movie goes from being a sci-fi disaster movie into a sci-fi action movie. Like, they get to the moon where I said, you know, this alien has taken over it. They go into the moon where they basically discover that the moon is, it's a machine. And apparently it was built by our ancient ancestors who were aliens, but they created the alien that's, you know, controlling the moon and it went, it became sentient and turned against them, leading to them creating the moon and using the moon to create life in this new galaxy, which is where Earth now is. And the moon's got like guns and spaceships on it that our three main heroes just use to fight this fucking robotic nanotech alien. You know, they do the whole self-sacrifice thing too. Gee, <laughs> wonder where I've seen that before. They destroy the alien and then they go back to Earth. So you're probably sitting there wondering why did that explanation of the third act sound so outrageous and terrible? It's because the entire third act of this movie is outrageous and terrible. <laughs> Everything I just said is the final act of this movie beat for beat. Hell, it sounds even more stupid from me just trying to explain it. Like, it's something you have to see for yourself in order to explain where my frustrations are coming from. <laughs> There's th This moment made me laugh. There was a moment at the end of this movie where I laughed my ass off. Pretty sure I pissed off some people in the theater with me. But there's a moment where Patrick Wilson is just like, Yeah, we did it! We saved the planet! Woo! And I'm just like, Yeah, right. Fuck all those people that just got steamrolled by the moon. But we're okay! You know, I'm just gonna say, guys, they have the nerve, they have the audacity to put written by in the credits. Nobody wrote this shit. All Roland Emmerich did was go back through all the fucking movies he's made in the past, take out certain things and plot points from those movies. You know, he packaged it up and sent it out as a brand new movie and hoped that it would be something different. When in all reality, he just made the same fucking movie he does every three years. Roland Emmerich is a hack. Like, I genuinely believe that. Guys, in the end, Moonfall is just a shitty, awful movie that Roland Emmerich shat out for the sake of collecting a paycheck. There is nothing in this movie that is redeeming or worth watching. Okay, you know what? I, I take that back. I will say, for the disaster stuff that was happening, it was pretty to look at. But those 15 minutes of cool visuals don't justify the two hours of boredom that I felt watching this. I felt like I was watching Independence Day Resurgence mixed with elements from that shitty Godzilla he made in the 2000s. This movie is not worth your time or your money or your sanity, so do yourself a favor and go watch Jackass Forever. You know, it's funny, Roland Emmerich recently attacked Marvel and said that their films are or unoriginal, uninspired, and that they're killing the movie business. <laughs> You know, talk about the, the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> Jesus, man. Rowan, my friend, I need you to take a long look in the mirror and think about what you said. Self-hate is a very powerful thing, my friend. <laughs> Speaking of hate, I hate your movie. This movie can go fuck itself straight to hell. I really hope that Roland Emmerich doesn't make another movie anytime soon. I I don't think my brain could actually handle that overload. <laughs> All right, guys, that was my review on Moonfall, and <laughs> it's kind of kind of a historical video. I got a brand new microphone, and I gave out my first go fuck yourself ever in the history of this channel. I still need to make the video explaining my rating system, that way people aren't confused, because up until now, it seems like I've just been rating shit whatever I want. But I promise you guys, there is a rating structure to my to my reviews and why I give them the ratings that I give them. It just so happens that Go Fuck Yourself is essentially the worst rating. And I'm sorry that I got this review to you guys pretty late. You know, my microphone broking was not in the plan. I will go ahead and say I am going to try and do a review on the book of Boba Fett just because the finale did come out today. So keep an eye out on the channel for a possible review on that. But anyway, drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new, guys. And let me know in the comments below if there's anything you want to see me review for you personally. But anyway, guys, that is all for now. And as always, this is Nathan Triner. I'm saying peace, and I'll see you guys next time for more Fireforged movie reviews. Peace out, everybody.